All right, well, welcome everyone to another episode of the Unpredictable Pipeline. Uh, we are interviewing B2B CMOs about uh, the difference between January 2020 and the rest of 2020, uh, where we're all focused on trying to build predictable pipelines for our organizations, but this year had other plans. Very excited to have with us Bright Cove CMO Sarah Larson from the Lake House. So it just a fair warning, if you hear kids cavorting in the background, she's staring at them at the lake, which I'm jealous of. It sounds fantastic to me, but um, I really appreciate you taking time to do this, and um, thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you so much. I, I, I wouldn't mind uh, being in the lake right now, but I, I'm okay being here with you. I'll do that in a little bit. <laughs> cool. Well, we will, it's in, and as we record this, I know we're getting a little, a little towards uh, beer o'clock your time, so we'll make this short, but appreciate you doing this. want to have you just start by just, just for people that don't know about Bright Cove, just explain what Bright Cove is, and then a little bit about how your marketing team is set up. Great. Well, again, Matt, thanks for having me. And this is a great topic that I think all marketers are thinking about right now, how to manage the unpredictability of the moment. Brightcove is a video streaming company. We have a video streaming platform that supports video streaming across all areas of the industry, from media to broadcasters to any direct-to-consumer content providers in the enterprise around marketing, sales, uh, internal communications, online commerce, retail, sports. Uh, so anywhere that you see video, uh, Bright Cove uh, may be, uh, may be uh, running it. Uh, so that's um, really our, our service. Uh, it's been an interesting few months, right? Since mm -hmm. January. Uh, I, I'm still, I still kind of think back to, because we just ended our first half, um, certainly our kickoff that we had our second week in January, where we had lots of plans. Uh, we had a really big growth plan for the year plan, so we had a lot of things lined up. And then about, what, about um, eight, eight to nine weeks into that, it uh, got upended. So there's been a lot of, um, a lot of change. Our marketing department is organized uh, functionally, so we have a centralized marketing uh, team um, that supports um, Bright Cove across marketing communications, demand gen, field marketing, product marketing, uh, go-to-market, and um, analyst uh, relations. And so that's really the remit of, of marketing. So as we started to look at how we needed to change and what pivots we needed to make, uh, one of the benefits was really having a one uh, aligned marketing team. And I can say the past few uh, months have really made us think differently and work differently together. Yeah, I believe it. And I would imagine that, you know, just it's not just the work you're doing, like where, you know, field marketing is different, event marketing is very different but just the act of working together, right? We can all say, oh, you know, like in marketing, we talk and type for a living, we can do it from anywhere. But the art of collaborating, whether you're in a consulting firm like us or whether you're sort of a team trying to sort of drive sort of in-house value, it is different. Like what, what changed in terms of the way you were managing your team and were there things you had to prioritize to create community to kind of foster sort of collaboration and efficiency when everyone's now more spread out than ever? Right. Well, one of, one of the things we, we got some early insights that um, this you know world of COVID was coming uh, as our uh, APAC team in Asia started to see um, the effects. They saw events starting down. They saw organizations needing video in different ways, mm -hmm. and so we actually started our thinking as a marketing organization and as a company. Uh, in looking at what was happening to our customers um, in Asia. And a couple of the things that we immediately saw were that um, the notion of in-person events were not going to be happening. Uh, and so that made us look at our own event program and how we needed to pivot. We also started talking to our customers about that. The other thing we realized is that there was a lot of confusion about what do you do? Uh, what do you do with video? And so we started looking at how do we educate a little bit more about what to, how can you use video right now as the world is changing pretty quickly. Um, we put in place a free live offer because we knew that there was a need. I mean, there were a lot of you know, community organizations, you know, churches, um, education groups that just very suddenly had to close, but they had to get content to um, their audience. So we put in place a live offer. Anyone could throw us a, a feed and you could get 50 hours of free live streaming. Um, so that was actually a really interesting way to sort of find out about how can video help right now. Uh, we learned a lot from, uh, from that. And then I would say sort of mid-March, um, we took a really hard look at our portfolio. What do people need right now? So we had sort of our plans from January, but we thought the market was going to need. Mm -hmm. And some of those still held true, but some of them weren't as important and some of them were more important than ever. Um, things like uh, business continuity solutions, um, things like secure video, SSO, 
um, reliability of platform. Those things are kind of, you know, bread and butter table stakes to us. Mm -hmm. uh, however, they became really important, right? Uh, because now you're putting your entire brand online, not just a piece of it for a campaign. And so um, we had to sort of look at how do we talk about it? What's, how do we position it? How do we market it? And how do we make sure people see value um, and, um, in, in the offer? Um, so we ended up um, putting in place a couple of additional offers in market um, that were not necessarily on our roadmap, but were you know, really kind of a need in the, in the time and um, learned a lot from the market as a result of that. You know, we, we've heard a lot of stories <clears throat> just over the last couple of months, but also in this, in this video series of marketers really, chief marketing officers really embracing this as a cross-functional leadership moment, right? Where, you know, you're not just the marketing program campaign officer, you're the chief market officer. And so the idea that you're not just like, oh, how do we generate more leads? How do we replace the trade shows? How do we price different? How do we package different? How can we re-merchandise? what an asset is and maybe pivot to a different industry without having to rebuild the program. Is that a role that you've had sort of pre COVID or is that something that sort of like conditions sort of allowed you to sort of, sort of step in and sort of take that sort of embrace that. I think if their marketing had been really asked to support a go to market function around new product launch, mm -hmm. uh, which is more so towards the end of the cycle of a, of, you know, bringing a product into market. I think the notion of looking more at the inbound requirements coming in from the market and quickly operationalizing those, not just into product, so upstream into product, uh, but really into packaging. So we, we really hadn't done a lot of packaging and that piece um, was a new um, muscle that we developed very quickly. Um, and how do we take pieces of what we have today, put them together in a package that meets a need uh, very specifically for um, a piece of the market. And so that that was a new um, new aspect that I brought into the marketing team. And, um, you know, it, that takes pricing, it takes legal, it takes operations, it takes finance, it takes sales, it takes, you know, field marketing, you know, so that really brings together cross-functionally a pretty big group of people. Do you think that sort of what we've had to do to quickly pivot on some of those variables is going to usher in sort of a new level of, I guess, agility for companies. I mean, even in better markets, the ability to sort of say, hey, here's the assets we have. Here's the product that's on the truck. How do we think differently about bringing that to market? And I think that that isn't necessarily a discipline that we've seen, not just from marketers, but from companies overall. But it seems like in good conditions and bad, those abilities to pivot um, can really help you keep your competitive edge and, and keep momentum going. Yeah, and you really, you go back to the base. I mean, I think of, you know, middle of March, I still distinctly remember the conversation of when, you know, I was on the phone with our CEO and, and um, you know, chief revenue officer, chief product officer, we're like, what, are, what do we need to do right now? Mm -hmm. And we had a really clear uh, vision as a company. We had three priorities of what we were going to do to kind of initially navigate. Number one was health and safety of our employees, um, their families, and our customers. And so that meant, obviously, movie going remote, it meant different workflows. It also meant different ways that we're going to engage with customers. And so we ended up using video a lot for that. The second was obviously managing our, our cash, cash position as a company um, and making sure that we worked with customers that maybe needed different payment terms or, or things like that and that we understood. And then the third um, is make sure that we were continuing to uh, build on our growth strategy. Um, we didn't want to just stay sort of stuck in the moment. And I think that priority, which is very important um, for us to, to think about, we had to think through in a different way. Because now all of our employees are remote, we're managing cash, um, which means we're not making investments in our growth strategy, maybe initially. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, that forces you to pivot, it forces you to get back to the basics. You know, who needs what right now and why? Yeah. And do we know that? And how do we, how do we go get it to market? And so I think those priorities really forced us back to the basics. And if we can keep that going forward, um, which is, you know, the intent, uh, I think that'll continue to, you know, help organizations like ours be, be nimble and agile. It's fascinating to me, sort of this, the, the case studies in incremental versus exponential change we've seen this year, where, you know, incremental change would be, you know, how do we get more people to the booth at the trade show? Like, what do we do differently with our, you know, sponsor happy hour? Exponential thinking is, let's not do events this year. Let's not do the trade show circuit, right? And so if you're, whether you do it by choice or whether you're forced into that exponential thinking, does that help you 
improve your business? And does it help give you new ideas in terms of how to sustain results in a better way moving forward? I think it does. I think we've got tons of examples of that. Um, Sarah, I know that the, the, the lake beckons and I really appreciate you taking time. I know you're crazy busy. Um, last question for you, just around that concept of things that are different now. What, what is something that you, know, you miss from the beginning of Q1 that you're looking forward to getting back to in some version of normal? And what's something maybe that you don't miss um, that you know, as, as things get back to some new normal that you're not going to go back to doing? I, I absolutely miss seeing my team. I've got a phenomenal team. I miss seeing them in person. Uh, I will tell you, I did see uh, a team member in person um, the other day, uh, socially distanced, very mm -hmm. safe. Uh, but when I saw her, I looked at her and my head did this scramble because <laughs> literally my brain, our brains are programmed only to understand how to see people, I think now on Zoom. Yeah. And so I, I said, look, you have to stop talking. I have to process you in 3D for a minute because, and it really was, it was this physical sensation. So I don't know if that's happening to other people, but um, I definitely, I miss seeing um, the, the team. We've been, they've been phenomenally uh, wonderful and excellent, um, but uh, seeing them in person would really be a treat. Um, things to hang on to. I think that idea of uh, sometimes we get stuck, right? We get stuck in the, oh, here are the 10 things we have to do so we can't do the other things. When all of a sudden the world seems to be in a little bit of free fall, you get a lot of clarity on what those three things are. And so how do you bottle that clarity and keep it and uh, always move forward with it? So um, I don't want to be in a crisis moment because those aren't fun to live in, but how do you bottle that good part of that thinking in your brain where it says, you know, let's, let's really crystallize the most important things and, and get alignment on those quick. So yeah. that's the piece that I'm going to try and take forward. Love it. Great advice. Well, thank you, Sarah Larson, Chief Marketing Officer at Bright Cove. Thank you for joining us uh, to talk a little about the Young for People. Yeah, have a great afternoon.